And I know this advice works for some people. Some people are able to turn art into a daily habit and it works for them. But I am not one of those people. Um, I'm really not. And so today I want to talk about why I don't like this advice and what I do instead to add some consistency to my creative practice. And of course, I wanted to thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This isn't something I've talked a lot about on this channel, but I have a chronic illness called Hashimoto's disease. It's admittedly extremely treatable. I'm not gonna die from it, don't worry. But I struggle a lot with the chronic fatigue and depression that it causes. It's a really good week for me if I can do six hours of productive work a day, which to be totally honest, I don't usually do. I, I don't know, I feel really bad <laughs> about my productivity. Um, yeah. The days just slip away from me sometimes and it can be really frustrating. I just I just struggle a lot with like the motivation to do anything and I'm really grateful that I have I don't know such a relatively low stakes job or something or I work with sponsors that are really understanding when I just can't do things sometimes. And I've kind of designed my my life around these side effects and built a business that focuses on passive income streams and extremely flexible working hours. And I don't know what I would do if I didn't have that. I think back to college and how I worked like at a part-time job, I had classes, I was TAing, I had internships and I was like making videos and like all at the same time. And I truly looking back cannot figure out how I did that. <laughs> I cannot figure out how to go back in time and like be that productive. It just, I don't know, it seems so impossible. And despite this, I've gone through periods where I've tried really hard to make art a daily habit. And to be honest, all this usually does for me long term is lead to burnout, hating my work and myself and having to take a break. It just, I don't know, it's not sustainable. I've never finished a 30 day drawing challenge. And when I tried Meds 100 Heads last year, it was a total slog. That took me almost a month instead of the usual 10 days. And that was over a year ago now. And I haven't drawn a single head since, unless you count some cute penguins that I doodle in my sketchbook sometimes. And I don't know, this really sucks to say, but I do kind of feel like a failure with this sometimes. I don't think my life is in a place where I can even try to make art a daily habit. Even having it as an aspirational goal makes me feel like I'm failing because it just seems so unachievable. I have no idea how to how to make that a daily habit. I don't know. It's just really difficult for me to to focus on it or something or like incorporate it into a daily routine. I suck at daily routines. I suck at any daily habit. I have to have a reminder on my phone to like remind me to take the medication that I need for like Hashimoto's disease. It's Synthroid. I just like, man, I don't know. It's hard. And I know that I'm not the only one that struggles with stuff like this. I know that I'm not the only one that thinks that if I had to force myself to take this advice, to take art every day, I'd probably end up really burnt out and create far less than I would otherwise. All of this discussion of having to make art every day in order to level up your skills and get better can feel really discouraging. But I think it's really important to take care of yourself and just do the best that you can. We'll get into how I take this advice and incorporate it into my life a little bit later. But even if you don't struggle with chronic illness or chronic fatigue, you probably have a lot of other responsibilities in your life. Things like school, a full-time job, a family. Making art every day sounds great. It sounds awesome. It sounds like a really good time. But it might just be a practical impossibility for you. I don't want you to feel alone in that, and I want you to know that even full-time art content creators like myself experience that too. There's a lot that goes into this job, but only a part of it is making art. It doesn't mean that turning art into your job is ruled out for you, but it does mean that it might take you a little bit longer than it otherwise would. And if you are, I don't know, if you're on your journey, I just want you to know that you should not expect to be able to make art every day, because, man, it's... A lot of work to be a one-person business even with an editor it's yeah it's a challenge you have to make art you have to make products you have to market yourself do all the businessy stuff i mean there's just a lot and then you have your life that you should be living hopefully and man social obligations housework all this stuff it's a lot so 
Instead of overworking yourself and setting yourself up for failure by having unrealistic expectations of your own performance, let's talk about the alternative. But before we do that, I do want to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace, because they have been an amazing partner for this channel and for my own art career. And I want to tell you a little bit about how they can benefit you. I made you. over $18,000 last year just from digital products. And Squarespace is the reason that happened. Squarespace has been crucial to the growth of my business, and I want you to understand exactly how it can help you. Squarespace makes it really easy to sell physical or digital products, display your work, grow your audience, and so much more. Squarespace's fluid engine allows you to design your website exactly how you would like. And with their new courses feature, you can host and sell online courses on your own website, which is a really cool addition. Every year, Squarespace adds brand new high value features to their service. So if you're looking for the perfect tool to propel your business to new heights, click the link in the description or go to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and use code Kelsey Rodriguez at checkout to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace and now back to the video. All right, let's talk about the alternative, the alternative to overworking yourself and just having a bad time. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, the advice of draw every day is trying to encourage consistency. The people giving this advice genuinely, they mean really well. Um, I don't want to speak ill of them. They are in a different place than I am though, right? It's just apples and oranges. Okay. That's, that's kind of what we're talking about here. Consistency for me, it can be a daily habit for sure, but it doesn't have to be. To me, consistency is whatever frequency works for you, for your lifestyle, that enables you to improve your skills and put out new work. Maybe this looks like taking one day a week to spend a few hours making art, or devoting an entire weekend to it a few times a month, or even devoting weeks to it a few times a year, or some combination of the three. The most that I can do right now, personally, is to take at least a few days a week to devote to making art. I spent a couple of days this week. I spent one day this week working on this pencil sketch, and I don't know, it was, it was a really good time. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. But I have a lot of other things that I'm managing for my business, and it's not super feasible for me to commit to trying to draw every single day. So instead, I like to do projects like this one, where I can kind of, you know, devote the entire day to it and really just enter into a nice flow state. I think that's why I struggle to make art every day because it really interrupts the other things that I'm doing. And I don't know, it's difficult for me to be creative on command like that, but being able to devote an entire day to it or you know, a very particular block of time means that I can enter into this really great flow state that just, I don't know, it's a really good feeling when the world falls away and all that you're focusing on is like the pencil on the paper or the brush on the canvas. It's, it's a really nice, it's a really nice feeling. So setting my expectations at a reasonable level that I can meet, even on the days where I struggle to get out of bed, it means that I'm more consistent than I think I'd otherwise be. I think if I tried to make art every day, it would be so impossible that I probably end up making far less art than I would if I had these expectations. <laughs> uh, the ones where I can just take a couple days a week to devote entirely to making art and focus on the rest of my business on the other days of the week. Yeah, I don't know. Setting lofty goals can sometimes bring out the best in us. It does for me in my business, in the marketing side of my business for me, but Sometimes it can also serve as a potent paralytic that can prevent us from doing anything at all. And that's how it kind of is with my art practice when I try to set really lofty goals. I've been really busy over the past few months with admin and business stuff and marketing and trying to plan out the next phase of my business. I'll be posting a video pretty soon, I think, about kind of the next phase of what I want to build here. But my plan is to take most of January off so that I can spend a ton of time making work and starting some larger projects, making more ambitious videos, etc. And that is a really great privilege, but also it means that I will likely make a lot more art in that one month period than I have for the past several months. So I think, I think your life is going to look like a series of seasons and you should try to make art as much as you can, but you shouldn't do it in a way that burns you out. You should do it in a way that 
complements the cadence of your lifestyle that you can, you know, carve out little bits of time for your creative practice at whatever frequency works for you. But I do think that consistency does have to be often enough that you don't feel yourself slipping, right? That you don't feel like your abilities are at a standstill, that you're kind of plateaued in terms of advancement of your skills. You do want to be able to improve, right? You do want to be able to get better. And I think that does require some level of consistency and some level of deliberate deliberate planning and reflection, just trying to learn from all of your work and figure out the next steps forward. So for this particular pencil sketch that I'm working on, I have it in front of me right now. Um, let me get it out here. <laughs> Hang on. I'm so prepared. Um, for this particular pencil sketch that you guys see me working on right now, I actually took this reference photo myself. I took it on a drive up to Redwood National Park. My boyfriend and I and our friends Monica and Jake, we all did this little road trip together, riding the one all the way up to NorCal. And we stopped by this this really interesting graveyard, I think in the middle of nowhere, and I found this tree kind of in, a, in this like pull-off area. And it was just like really interesting. I don't know. I took a picture of it. Probably my favorite picture that I took on that trip, to be honest. Um, though I have a lot of really great photos from that trip. Maybe I'll put some on the screen right now. And I really wanted to kind of try and practice the interesting organic nature of trees. Trees to me are this really interesting combination of like straight lines and these subtle curves. If you try and draw a tree with, you know, too many curves to it, then it can often feel kind of fake or fantastical, too dreamy. And of course, if it's too geometric looking, then you've drawn like a weird stick figure monstrosity thing that looks terrible. And so trees are like a, this really interesting kind of combination of these different, um, these different things. And I really enjoyed this. There were a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, there's lots of strong lighting in this particular reference photo. And you'll notice that in my pencil sketch version, I did not really pay any much attention to the foliage of this tree. I really wanted to focus on the trunk, the branches, like the spindly little you know branches that come off and the way that the shadows kind of interplayed on these branches and a little bit of the surrounding environment. This tree is kind of like falling off this weird soil eroded creek bed situation. And there's like a fence in the back with some pasture, etc. I did not really fill any of that in, but I think I might do a painting of this eventually. So I kind of wanted to figure out the composition, figure out how I wanted to simplify and stylize these particular shapes. And you'll notice that, you know, particularly the top of this tree does not reflect the original reference photo. And that's really kind of what I enjoy about about art in general, your ability to look at a reference photo and change things, but also study that structure, study the way the lighting works, and practice mark making. And I keep wanting to say the word brush strokes, but I'm working in pencil. It's not the same thing. Um, mark making is, I guess, the best I could do here. But yeah, I had fun. I was watching a lot of Dimension 20 when I was working on this piece. Um, if you guys watched Dimension 20, let me down in the comments. I was watching the finale of The Unsleeping City, which is an older campaign, but a good one. Um, yeah, I, I did not pay a lot of attention to foliage. Again, I really wanted to kind of just give the illusion of foliage. I did not want to spend a particular amount of time making this drawing too detailed. So we're just kind of putting in some masses here, adding in like some kind of mid value shapes and just having fun with it. Um, just practicing. I haven't done a lot of work in graphite. I don't know, maybe the last time I made a video that was just drawing was like a few months ago now. And then before that, I don't even remember, but I recently picked up this cool material called Duralar. Duralar is great fun. It's so cool. Pencils, thrive on Duralar. It feels like your pencil is just gliding. There is no resistance. It's beautiful. My mechanical pencil, my Graph Gear 500 from Pentel that has a 0.7 lead size in it, worked really well on this Duralar. All my pencils did for that matter, but the Graph Gear especially thrived. 
And I noticed that I was able to get these really, really dark darks that I really struggled with on regular paper, but because the the Duralar offers no resistance, it was amazing to draw on. I had a lot of fun. But yeah, I mean, I think this drawing for me represents exactly one week of creative work. I did one drawing this week and it was this one. So I think that just kind of is what it is. Sometimes life isn't fair and you can't be as productive as you want to be. And that's just how it goes sometimes. I wish that I could be more productive. I wish that I could make more art on a more regular basis, but it's just, it feels so impossible. I really struggled to get a lot of stuff done, not just my art. I don't want you guys to think that I'm putting art on the back burner, that I'm not making it a priority because I am. It's just that life is complicated and life is a lot of work. I, yeah, it's just a lot to manage sometimes. Anyway, I don't want you guys to feel alone if you also struggle with health problems or chronic illness or mental illness or, you know, whatever you're dealing with. And I want you to feel like there's a place for you in the art community and that you're no less of an artist because you're not able to draw every single day. The important thing is that you express yourself, that you have fun with your work, and that you try to improve if you want to. You don't have to improve, I guess. You can just make art for fun if that's what you want, but I personally, I really thrive on the challenge of getting better, and I really want to see my work advance. I want to be able to make the art that I've always dreamed of making, and to do that, I know that I need to have consistency in my creative practice, and that it would be really good if I could draw every day, but it's just... I don't know. And I don't think it's possible. But anyway, I still had fun. And I think this pencil sketch is really great. I'm very proud of it. I haven't done something like this, a pencil sketch at this scale in, I don't know, years, maybe? I don't draw a ton. I mostly just work in oil paint. But if you guys want to see this turn into a real painting, let me know down in the comments. I would, I would love to do that. But yeah, okay. Now that we have talked about the rest of the the, the meat of this video, I guess. I just want to catch you guys up on what's been going on in my life a little bit, I suppose. I don't know. I have... We're at the 15 minute mark now. I should probably talk some more, right? Long videos are good. Okay, so I recently ordered these uh, linen panels from Raymar. Raymar has these amazing linen panels. I've always wanted to try them, so I ordered some. And then I also got some brand new brushes from Rosemary & Co., my favorite brush store of all time and they are the Richard Schmid brush set. So my plan is over the next couple months, I really wanna do a deep dive into Richard Schmid's work. Richard Schmid is probably one of the most famous modern oil painters. He's widely considered to be a master at his craft. He passed away, I think in 2021, but his work is amazing. It had such an impact in the art community and I really want to do a comprehensive study of his work of his you know mark making like his style his aesthetic the colors that he uses how he selectively keeps things tight and detailed versus loose and you know expressive because his work for me is just this really interesting combination of like tight realism and very loose abstraction and the way that he uses these two different, I guess, tools in his toolbox of realism and, and you know, very loose, expressive brush strokes, etc. He uses these tools so selectively that I really want to figure out how he does it and like kind of how he thinks through all these things. So I have a couple of his books already. Um, I think I have the Alla Prima 2 book and his Landscapes book. I want to do a really good study of his work, really figure out you know, what's going on in that brain artistically, do some studies, some master copies. So I'll probably be sharing that over the next couple months. And yeah, just a really good study of his work. I'm really interested in having my work be looser. I feel like, oh man, I don't know. I feel like maybe it's because I usually work fairly small, but I struggle to stay loose. I struggle to put one brush stroke down and commit to it. I mean, even in this pencil sketch, you guys will probably have seen me erase a bunch of stuff and kind of readjust here and there. And I kind of struggle with just putting one mark down and leaving it and not wanting to revise it, not wanting to make it more detailed or something or I don't know. But I should really just learn to commit. I should really just learn to be a little bit freer with my work, more expressive, looser. 
and go from there. And I did find that, you know, the graphite, the pencil as a medium feels a little bit less serious to me than oil paint, right? It feels like very, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't want to diss on you graphite artists, but it does feel in a certain way kind of disposable. Um, not in a bad way, in like a freeing way or something. Do you know what I mean? We're like, it's just some graphite on some paper, very low stakes, you know what I mean? So I feel like, I feel like I was able to be freer here because the stakes were lower and I should figure out a way to kind of hijack my brain to think that all the stakes are lower all of the time with everything in my creative practice. That I always have this level of looseness and expressiveness to my work because I really do love how this pencil sketch turned out. I really had a lot of fun kind of darkening some of these branches. Like, sorry, I'm holding the pencil sketch right now while I'm recording this voiceover. I really enjoyed just like the little bits here and there where I made the branches like black to kind of, I don't know, help illustrate they were in shadow a little bit more or something or that there was like some other stuff going on. And I feel like it gave the tree a lot of character than if I just left it, you know, unfilled in or something. And I don't know, the little places where I just have like these more rustic kind of rushed marks, I, I really enjoy I especially like the little fence that I put in in the back and how the, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, I don't know if I really recorded this very much, but when I put in kind of the environment this tree is in, this little like craggy ravine creek bed thing that you don't really see a ton of, but that's kind of existing in the lower right hand corner of this sketch, I really do like the way the tree interacts with that environment there and how it's like kind of the world's falling away but this tree is like just like still here and who knows how long it's gonna last. So that's kind of all that I had to talk about today. That's going to be the end of this video for me. Um, if you guys are interested in owning my work, owning prints, I do offer prints on my online shop. You can buy e-signed copies in larger sizes than I offer on my in-print storefront, but I do offer more affordable prints on my in-print storefront. And if you want to learn how I organize things and kind of check out my art business and productivity focused resources, I do have tons of Notion templates on my online shop as well. So be sure to check those out. But that is the end of this video for me. If you guys liked this one, leave a comment down below. I really, I don't know, I don't get as much engagement usually on these art focused videos. And I, you know, of course, we'll keep making them, but it's always good to hear from you guys. And let me know how you, how you like this piece. I'll be waiting to hear from you. So yeah, there are some other videos on the screen right now. If you guys want to check those out, if you want to watch more content, I'm thinking about turning my videos into a podcast. So that's a thing. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.